Ain't hey, you no know, half step in with Marcus J live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. Thank y'all to everybody who is listening to us, who are part of the discussion. We got a lot that we have been getting into here tonight. We talked about the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight. I don't, I don't know if we'll call it a fight, but we we talked about it. Uh, we talked a little bit about what is going on in Baltimore. We're going to continue that. We're going to continue that here in this in this segment here as well. Uh, we got a special guest, special special guest uh, that is going to join us here momentarily on the live line, and we'll we'll, we'll introduce him here momentarily. But before we do that, I look around the room, and we have some new participants to the discussion. Of course, you hear this brother every single. Tuesday night and on two, on Sundays as well. Uh, you hear him on in live and radio right here on Legacy Internet Radio every single Tuesday night. We've got our brother, Mr. LP. Stephen Sykes is in the room. What's up, brother? Good evening. It's fun having a lot of uh, being in a lovely location. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. You know, we alluded to the new locations. The first Ain't No Half Step and Marcus J. We've done in the new digs, the yeah, new the, den. Ruben the, coined the phrase. The back cave uh, is lovely. You, well, mm-hmm. it's not called the bat cave i'm gonna give me a bat cave it's, sign it's, right it's, up it's called the den 2.0 to coin the phrase the big rule you know who's you know rudely you know having an off line discussion two feet from me uh but i'm gonna act like i don't see that and I'm so gonna, i'm gonna actually introduce the person who he's t- rudely talking to uh so I, I hate to cut you off but yeah. that person who he's rudely talking to uh while you and I are trying to have a live mm. radio show, yeah, well, uh, uh, is the co-host of this show. Uh, she's a grown woman, and you hear her every single week on Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. My big sis, you know her as S. Y. Butler. What's up, man? What's up, baby? You over there having offline conversations you know, with I'm him? In some kind of way. But you should. She you need to calm what? herself. Ru- you should. Ruben comforted me. And yeah. Mm. Um, any, oh any. Well, Hi, that's how it gets everybody. down around here. <laughs> everybody, everybody. Well, uh, this time of the show where, we, you know, we've been talking about it, you know, for the last uh, couple of segments. And, uh, you know, I'm very happy and honored to have this brother on the live line with us. You know, we've had him here on the show in the past. Uh, you know, we got him doing double duty tonight because he just got finished doing Tando radio show on black on his on his on his radio station. Uh, so I'm going to have him give you all of his information as he uh, shares with us some information about the word exaction. We're going to talk about Baltimore and we're going to get some wisdom and some guidance from my brother, David Wren, David in L.A. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Marcus J. and all of the the. Uh Legacy uh, Internet Radio family and ain't no half stepping family. What's going on? We, much love, we, much respect. We doing good, brother. What's going on, Dave? It's good What's to up? talk to you up, again. Brother? It's good to talk to you again. I'm glad to have you. Doing all right, man? Oh yes, lovely, lovely, brother, lovely. Tell us about who you are and where they can listen to you before we get into the specifics of what we're here to talk about here on this show. Well, as you said, uh, David Wren, aka Dave from LA. Um, can you catch me on Blackonomics? At 10 Eastern, uh, no, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time is, uh, with uh, the Empowerment Radio Network. And then uh, we also, after that, uh, have my show. It's called Tando Radio Show. Um, and it's, it's brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. And, you know, we just discuss what's going on in the world and trying to get our community prepared for what's coming down the pipe. Uh, because there are, a, are, there are a lot of contrived and there's a contrived agenda that's being played out globally against the people and the inhabitants of humanity that's here on the earth. And we really need to position and prepare ourselves so that we can increase the options that we have as the plan to maintain the overall paradigm of control over the masses um, starts to fall apart. Because, you know, once, and what, what happens is that when the controllers are the so-called powers that be uh, when they start to institute uh, measures of great fear that's great opportunity for us to seize and to actually uh, bring about an agenda that's more benevolent and, and a better outcome a sustainable outcome for everyone at at whole and not just for a selective few 
And so that's what uh, Tando Radio Show is all about. Tando means it's African for love. So, hey, Marcus, that's what that's. It's what we do, and that's why we're here now. I can dig it. I appreciate it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Uh, listening to and talking to Dave in L.A., host of Tando Radio Show here on uh, Legacy and the Radio as well. Uh, he is joining us tonight on Black t- from blacktalkradio.com as well as the Empowerment Radio Network. Black Economics heard every single day from 1 to 4 Eastern. Tando Radio Show on Black Talk Radio is heard from 6 to 8 uh eastern standard time dave when you and i kind of build it you know in the interest of full disclosure you and i we build very regularly when we were building earlier yeah. today you gave me some homework <laughs> as you normally do <laughs> as you normally do um and the homework that you gave me was to look up the word exaction uh and so yeah i looked up the word i know what it means but and i've been teasing it throughout the show i told big rube to look it up so i'm sure he did so i'm sure he's ready to discuss it uh sy and steven are here with us now uh and the listeners i i teased to them earlier that they should look up the word exaction as well right let's have a discussion exaction why did you have me look up that word and why are we talking about exaction Okay, great. But you know what, uh, Marcus, I didn't know what the, the show, what you guys talked about with the Pacquiao uh, Mayweather <laughs> fight, but I would just like to chime you in wanna, real you quick. Get, you you want to get on in that for, first? Uh, you want to have a little fun before we get a little serious, huh? Re- re- real quick, let me say, you oh, know, Floyd, okay. Floyd beat Pacquiao at his game, at Pacquiao's game, and he destroyed Pacquiao at, at uh, Mayweather's game. So Mayweather totally beat Pacquiao. He stepped into the ring. He didn't. Running from him would be where he was doing before when he, you know, you can kind of say that, but I don't think that was the case at all. The brother is really smart. He's he's a great businessman, and he knows boxing inside and out, and and he is one of the greatest boxers of all time. And he defeated and beat Pacquiao straightforward, man to man. Pacquiao had every opportunity to cut the ring and to punt, hit, and everything else. He did hit him. He, he was on the ropes with him. That's Pacquiao's fight, and Pacquiao couldn't take advantage of it. Why? Because Floyd beat him at his own game. He backed Pacquiao up and didn't give him the opportunity to get off. That's what you do in boxing. That's the art of boxing. I think a lot of everyone. People, I guess you know. I, I, I guess everyone was looking for a knockout because they paid so much for everything. And that was the only real way that someone could win this fight is if they knock, knock the other person out or just totally just annihilate them. But these were two great fighters, and Mayweather was the better fighter, beat him handedly. I, I, think, it's, no I, think, it was, I think it was obvious and clear that May, Mayweather won the fight. And I think anybody who has a problem with him running, you just being whacked, and you, you don't pay attention, and you mad because you spent yeah. $100 and you don't watch boxing. Because if you do, right. then 47 other times, you would have saw that this is what Mayweather does. That's the kind of fighter he is. This is what he does. And that's not he a fought, fighter. He fought the fight that he fought. And so... You know, you yeah. can talk. You can talk, Stephen and others, all you want about you know that's not a fighter and that's not what fighters do. He going out there, he winning fights. Period. Mm-hmm. I'm not. A, I'm not a Mayweather guy. No. I can't stand the guy. I can't stand the guy. But yeah. if but you going out the there, absent of of the his his boxing ability, just what he do. He's a boxer. That's what the name of the sport is: boxing. Hit, okay. Hit and not get hit, Stephen. I'll, I'll let you hit comment, and Stephen. not get hit. And guess what? He actually stood toe to toe with Pacquiao, but Pacquiao could not get off. Why couldn't he get off? What they're not, what people are not really seeing, is that Pacquiao could not get off on uh, Floyd because Floyd was jabbing and countering him so effectively and, fi- and efficiently, and then he would move. He couldn't. There was nothing that Pacquiao could do. He was outboxed and he was outpunched. He was outpunched. Steven. He had opportunities. He caught. He caught Floyd, but he couldn't capitalize on it. I let Stephen. Let, let Stephen get in here. Stephen, what you got, man? First of all, I'm sorry, but it, yes, he's done it 47 times, and I'm sorry that's not a fight. There's plenty of technical boxers out there in the world in history, past, and I suspect to the future that could fight and still not run all the time and hug and grab and things of that nature. That's not boxing. If you're going to win a, a fight, I'm not saying sit there and have a slug out fest, but I'm saying still go out there and fight. I don't know what round you saw, but there is n- there is nothing of where uh, f- 
you know, uh, Mayweather was sitting there dominating in anything of that fight. Running around and then land one or two punches here and there and then showboating to look like he done something and things of that. I, there I, was I, nothing I, 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 everybody's that was just a everybody's, bad fight. Everybody's there's entitled, a lot of people every, that agree Everybody's entitled to their, opinion, to their opinion, but you got to speak facts on Aino has to have a That is a fact. And the fact that look the, ma- and the fact that, that and the fact of the matter is that he doubled him up in punches. Double. Look at the punch count. He, he just threw more punches, though. Doesn't mean he did anything. not throw more punches. I'm talking about Pacquiao. He, he threw six Mayweather. Because this is this is this is you telling him. No, yourself. I'm saying this no, is, no, no, no. I'm finish. not. I'm not telling. Let him me about finish. Those. Is you telling on yourself? Because you either didn't watch the fight or you didn't look at the stats. No, I did look because, at the stats. Okay, then you obviously you didn't because they because Mayweather threw six. Count them. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six more punches. But he doubled him up in the amount of punches that he landed. And so you can sit here and you can talk to me about how he ran and he ducked and he did all of that. But, but at the end of the day, he served him up the same way he served the other 47 guys that he fought up. And this, that's how he won the fight. This is it's where not glamorous. doesn't tell the truth. It, yes, it does. No, it's not glamorous. Way. It doesn't make you feel good. You're mad because you spent $100. I didn't spend $100. All, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying in general because you're saying the same stuff that everybody else is whining and complaining about. Mayweather you won. Know, the, Steve, May, Steve Mayweather won the a, fight. He's a, a punk. good point. You know, he he brought up um, Hagler Hearns. That was a a great great. That fight. was the greatest fight okay. I ever saw in my life. Look, when, when it, that was the greatest fight that I've ever seen in my life. Also, but see where Thomas Hearns went wrong was that that wasn't his game, and he stepped into and tried to beat Marvin Hagler to appease people that Dang. you know he was hearing everything from that you need to win this way. And he tried to win the fight in a way that he wasn't designed. His boxing style could not maintain. And he ultimately got defeated that way. See, everyone really wanted Floyd to be defeated. They wanted him to fight a fight that they chose, that they would orchestrate, and that they would design. But see, Floyd is much smarter than that. He is going to go to bat. And this is, you know what, this is synonymous with our community. Because we fight on on the terms that other people set, and this is why we always lose. I can dig that. This hey, is hey, why we <laughs> always lose. Dave, you got a fan in our brother Hakeem in Jersey. He shares our state. Hakeem said you on the money. Uh, he said is boxing. Uh, he, you know the whole part about him holding. Uh, Hakeem himself, he boxed uh, when he was from 12 years old to 24. And they tell you to hold if that cat is getting off or about to go off and you can get away. Dave, hold hold, hold your thoughts, Dave. I'm going to have you uh, describe exaction. We're going to move on to that. Get Big Rube, since we did talk about the boxing, Big Rube wants to get his comment in. The last, <laughs> last comment on the fight before we move on, Big Rube, what you got, man? Look, man, I'm sick of all these people talking about that. I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of a Floyd fan, but real talk, boxing – you ain't trying to get hit. Any fight that you're in, you ain't trying to get hit. So you sit there and talk about, he was running away, he was running. Look, real talk, nobody ain't trying to get hit. That's how Oscar De La Hoya still look like the way he looked. That's how, <laughs> that's how Floyd Mayweather still look like the way he looked because he ain't getting hit. And you can sit there and talk about, there ain't no real fight all you want. But real talk, if you're in a real fight, the number one thing you are not trying to do is get hit. Yeah, I can and do Floyd is fast enough not to get hit. So all y'all people talking about he running, he running, put yourself in there. Do you want Pacquiao to keep hitting on you? Of Hell course. no. Of course not. Hell no. You're going to run, you're going to duck, and you do everything you need to do not to get hit. And I'm sick of all these people talking about he running. Put yourself there. You ain't trying to get knocked out. I think Big Rube just basically had Boom. the comment. of the, Yeah, that's a drop the mic moment. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus <laughs> J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. We've got our brother uh, David Wren, also known as Dave in L.A., who hosts a Tando Radio Show on, on, on blacktalkradio.com uh, every single uh, day, Monday through Friday from 6 to 8. Uh, you can check him out. Dave, uh, we were talking to you about exaction. Yes. Um, and, of course, the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight has us all riled up. But uh, talk to us about exaction. I did my homework. You gave me some homework. I did my homework. So I looked it up. I know what it's all about. Why don't you school mm-hmm. the listeners of the show? What is exaction, and why did you have me look that up? Well, exactions is, is very important because – it is the devil in the details and why the Civil Rights Act was the worst thing for our community and was the worst thing for the nation. Because the Civil Rights Act actually, actually has 
uh, enslaved and held the rest of the whole United States, every citizen, uh, as subject to the government itself. It basically put the United States under a bondage code. And it was the worst thing in the world, especially for our community, because it did everything opposite of what the fight for everything was. Instead of having civil rights, we should have never fought for civil rights. And any time that you hear a civil rights leader, you're actually talking about someone that's an agent for the government. Okay, because only pre- on the only organizations that gains from civil rights is the government itself, because they exact the power away from the people. This is what, what exactions mean. You've heard uh, misdemeanors and felonies, correct, uh, Marcus? Absolutely. Most people have. Yes. Okay, an exaction is a tort. It's not a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. What it is is, let's say you're a at, you know, at your radio show. You, at the radio show, you don't put all, uh, tie all the wires down and someone comes in um, and they fall. You, you committed a tort because you were in business and you knew that someone could likely get hurt because you didn't make a, a, a uh, safe environment for them. That's a tort, okay? And it's a, the legal meaning of it, which many people don't know, and then the legal meaning that they usually get is very uh, short or purposely diluted. This is what the real meaning of exactions is. It's a willful wrong done by an officer or by, or by one who, under the color of his office, takes a fee or pay for his services more than what is allowed by law or more than what's due. It's the taking of something when nothing is owed or nothing is due. It is also an exaction is an extension of extortion. Now, why is this important? This is important because if you look at the Civil Rights Act, which doesn't go back to 1964, it doesn't go back to uh, 68, it goes back to 1866. And the reason why it's going back to 1866 is because the overall Constitution itself is a declaration of, of enslavement. And they've been trying to get civil rights into the lexicon and into the general public for years. And they just needed the right situation to do it. Hence, the 60s came about and it brought about the perfect opportunity to bring in the Civil Rights Act. And now let me read to you what the Civil Rights Act says. The Civil Rights Act is um, uh, U.S. Code 42, Chapter 21. Civil Rights Title 42, and it it reads as follows. All persons within the jurisdictions of the United States shall have the same rights as every state and territory to make and enforce contract, to be sued, to be given evidence to the full uh, equality and benefit of the law, and to proceed from the securities of the persons and property as enjoyed by white citizens, and shall be subject to the like punishments, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind. Punishments and pain and exactions is where the government had legalized extortion against the people. This is what exactions is, and this is why the worst thing that anyone, especially in our community, can do is ever claim their civil rights. Because whenever you claim in your civil rights, you are subjecting yourself to the same pains and punishments, pains and punishments and exactions of all kinds. Let me get some. Let me, let, me, let, me, hold, let me get, let me get some comments to, in. Okay, go ahead. Let me get let me get some comments in here, Dave. Uh, Stephen, you want to comment? Yes. No offense to you, sir. Uh, thank you for coming on the show, but. I fundamentally, factually, and totally disagree with you. Um, I think it's incorrect. When I hear people say about the civil rights um, issue is the worst thing that we do, is I think that's a, be honest to me, a cop out excuse for the lack of 
uh, forthright in holding our people accountable for letting things get out of hand. If we sat here and fought for the same things in terms of education and holding our ground as we did in the 50s, 60s, and 70s further on, then we, got on, we were fine. I think somewhere in the 70s and maybe early 80s, we lost our way in terms of not holding our foot to the pedal to the metal and keep on going and demanding certain things. No organization, no country, no anything in this world makes it on their own. I say this uh, phrase all the time, you know, um, integration without assimilation. We need no, no, we all live on this earth together and we're going to have to work together. There's plenty of times without in history uh, with uh, the trades from uh, the Filipino to South America to other areas um, in the Pacific Islands that have had trades where we work together and things of that nature. Now, if you want to forward it on to civil rights in terms of the Constitution, what you're basically is trying to say is, the aspect of the civil rights that we're slaving off of a, uh, a paper that basically made people in general slaves and that's not exactly how it was supposed to go what it really intended to be is to help everybody give rights and equal amount of information that's supposed to be for everybody not only we were able uh, but we fell in terms of enforcing those things but you've seen in other times and generations and other cultures have you've seen them with Japanese and Asian Americans where they sat there and fought for their rights here in America and moved on you've seen it where in the past not just blacks but French Irish and Polish, all those other different cultures were treated horribly, not as bad as slaves, uh, blacks, but were treated horribly. And they took their time and got involved in education and a variety of other different things. Same thing in the Asian American community. The black community did not, no by any means, get involved in taking advantage of education. And many of the things in our communities, yes, there's a lot of things that are done wrong to us, but also at the same time, we did not take the efforts to uh, make things better. I give a perfect example. Let's use the topic of the moment with Baltimore. Yes, all these people walked out and marched and everything else, and their big topic was education and availability in those communities. But I know for a fact that when they did the uh, Board of Commissioners meetings and things of that nature, six count them, six black people showed up overall and none of them even lived in the west uh, that side of Baltimore and it did not take involved. Why is it you go to every community that our black uh, statistics are so low? At some point in time we can't hold everybody else accountable. We have to look at our own face in our mirror and point hold us accountable. So that's where the fra frailty of the civil rights has happened. It made some people lazy and not continue to fight and our forefathers and our continued people a generation today refuse to hold people accountable too much of don't tell us what to do instead of being responsible. Dave, to that, you say what? You know, it's, it's amazing where you can give the legal definition and give the actual writings from the actual law itself. And so many of us are so confused, and they, they take it in a way other than what it should be taken. There is nothing that you can deny and say about what I just read and come away with to try to bring about some form of justifying what the system is. The worst thing that ever happened to our community and to the country itself was for civil rights because it actually enslaved you to the government. The thing that we should have been uh, fighting for, which Stephen has no, he probably never heard of, exactions before this and you should look up the word and see what the legal meaning is because that holds precedence in court and so what we should have been fighting for was our absolute unleanable and primary rights those are rights that are given to you by god almighty not as a subject as a citizen of a government who will always write laws for their control over you this is what exactions mean. I don't know if you heard or didn't hear, hear me, Stephen. It's a tort. It's a crime. It's a willful wrong done by the government when they're taking something when they have no right to take it. It's an extortion. This is what the real cusp of it all is. And participating in their system means only one thing. If you play by their rules, they will rule. All of the voting, the worst thing that we can do is vote because it's, it doesn't matter who you vote for. It matters who counts the vote. And the counting of the vote 
is, has already been fraudulent, and it will always be fraudulent. See, you continue to try to get the system to accept you, but they've already accepted you on their terms. It's not where you can invoke your terms on them because you're playing on their field. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get another comment in here, Dave. Uh, Hakeem is, is listening to us as well. Hakeem also disagrees with you. Uh, Hakeem is asking what were you reading and quoting. Um, he's also looking it up. He says that he didn't see anything in the Civil Rights Act. Uh, he's going through the text. He said that we got civil rights because of the communists. Um, the communists on the international stage shamed America. Uh, they say you talk about denying our people economic rights. Look at how you deny your people basic fundamental rights and human rights. Uh, and he also um, questioned when you said God gave us these rights. And so uh, I'll, have you, I'll have you respond to that. Well, see, you know, the, the, the God-given rights, is that's, that's based off one's belief. So that is, you know, if, if Hakeem doesn't want, that's, that's cool. I totally get that. But this is where this comes from. This comes from the Civil Rights Act. You could take the Civil Rights Act, and it has been revised in 1981, 1983, in 1988, but the original Civil Rights Act comes from 1866. And what you have to do is you have to read statements of equal rights. That's what you have to read. And then that's where you'll, you will find exactions. Okay? And exactions is nothing new. It's also in the IRS code because they are able to exact taxes, which is illegal. It's a willful wrong. If you look up in exactions in any legal dictionary, it's illegal. It's actually an act that is of a criminal nature and with criminal intent. This was the, the devil in the details that was a part of one of the many devils in the details in the Civil Rights Act. But not only the Civil Rights Act, there's also it's in the Constitution. And I'm not talking about Amendment 13. I'm talking about the, the powers of the uh, Congress. If you don't know the history of things, you will buy the propaganda not even on sale. And you will, you, what, what happens is that, see, you got, you, Stephen is a good person. But, see, the thing is that Stephen is, is, is not the one that's actually creating these, these bills and this agenda. Well, but see, it's ha ha very difficult when you defend it and you do not know exactly what you're defending. Ha ha That's very dangerous. Blind faith let, destroys many. Let me get you, let me get some some more comments in, Dave. Hakeem is saying the argument's been proven wrong about the taxes being illegal. Um, he's Hakeem is listening, definitely listening, but he's online, so I have to get his comment in as I can. Stephen, of right. course, is in the room. He wants to address what you said. Stephen, real quick, what you got? Exaction also means demanding payment for something that was not fair or unjust. What's happened with the, uh, with the original uh, civil rights was in a lot of the cases, if you go into the subjects and also regarding the uh, commentary at that time, was also demanding, okay, we'll give you your rights if you did a certain amount of servitude. But that was it. If, to your point about you know demand playing by their rules, well, look at the rules who are running the government now, the heritage. There are different, ethnic, different countries of background, not the British and the Germans that originally was coming through at that time and then now you see what they did they got themselves involved in education and within the government we as a people who have failed um, and also you can make the case for other organiz uh, races as well to get involved and stand and support each other and things of that nature one of the worst things we could do is um, not vote one of the worst things we could do is not getting involved it's proven that um, and this is and this is a fact if we just had like at least two more thousand people People. We had like over 10,000 African Americans that did not vote um, during the 2000s. Actually, we wouldn't have Bush in our office in the first place. Uh, one thing that I will say on the, the voting aspect, I think that part of me agrees and part of me disagrees with you, Dave, on the voting part because 
the, what Stephen just said about 2000, you know, if there had been more numbers on one side versus the other, I'm, I'm not thoroughly convinced that Al Gore would have been that much better, but he would have been different. Right, and we would have had a different, we would have had a different outcome. But I think a big part of voting, it's not so much on the, the national federal scale. I think it's imperative on a local, local. scale especially when you look at Baltimore, because I looked up Baltimore and their mayor, um, the sister there, you know, who nobody had anything to say about until this particular situation that came up in Baltimore. Now everybody got a freaking opinion about her. Uh, well, you know what? One out of five people in the whole damn town voted. One mm -hmm. out of five. 500, 600,000 people. You saw the stuff in, 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 the, 600,000 people in, in Baltimore and 100,000 people voted. So if you ain't happy with her, and you wanted that 500,000 people, keep your mouth shut, one. And two, if you're in a certain part of town, and I could just use Richmond, Virginia here. There's a county here called Henrico County, which surrounds Richmond, Virginia. I won't disparage my town. It's my hood. I live here. But the reality is there's part of Henrico County that spends a lot of money, and there's part of Henrico County that don't spend a lot of money. And the part of Henrico County that does not spend a whole lot of money is the part of town where no one goes to the PTAs, no one goes to vote, nobody goes and, and, and does their civic duty. Whereas the part of town that actually shows up and shows out, they're the ones that get the money. Those are the ones that get the computers. Those are the ones that get the nice facilities. Those are the ones that get the upgrades to the schools. They got AC in their buildings where in the other areas they don't. You can talk about demographics. And I'm saying a whole lot without getting into demographics. If you know Marcus J, you already know what I'm saying. Read between the lines. The truth of the matter is, we ain't out there doing what we supposed to do with regards to dictating what happens in our neighborhood. And some of that comes with voting. On some levels it's big and on some levels it's not. The whole, you know, you know, what they call college, uh uh the the, the college thing. Oh uh, uh the the college thing with the with the presidential vote, I think that's kind of nonsense and I don't understand where that comes from and the whole voting thing. But on the local level, Dave, I think it's imperative, man. Tell me why I'm wrong. Okay, let me tell you why this is right. Once again, it doesn't matter who, who... If voting mattered, it would be illegal. It doesn't matter who you vote for. It matters who counts the vote. And you said about the PTA and everything else. And one of the things that we don't go to is we don't go to the hearings where people come out, the so-called whistleblowers, and they admit under oath what happens in, the, in different things. Uh, today's show on Tando... I had a video where a gentleman, in, he was in Ohio. I'll send it to you, uh, Marcus. Okay. Under oath, under a, uh, it was with the state senate of Ohio. And he was a video, I mean, he was a programmer, a voting machine programmer. And he said that he programmed it so that the outcome of the election could be determined by their programmers. It was completely fraudulent. This is what this gentleman said under oath in Ohio at the state uh, Senate. This is what has to happen here. We need to not be at each other's throat. You know, this is something that we need to really systematically understand. If voting mattered, I would ask you, what has it changed? It hasn't changed anything because we continue to go to the same organizations in the same system that has enslaved people from the beginning. I don't know if you gentlemen have noticed, but the United States has invaded multiple countries yes, throughout, this, throughout, this, this, uh, uh, throughout this world. They have, been in, they have never been invaded by anyone. They have been the invaders. And they have been the purveyors of violence throughout this world, starting with us as the black community and extending that colonization throughout the world. And this is because so often we try to buy the creed and we don't look at the deeds. And when you don't look at the deeds, when the deeds and the creeds don't match up, then there is a problem. And you can't excuse their actions away you could do it as, as much as you want to but you're not on the side but you are not having the moral high ground and you're not speaking the truth 
Dave, because I was, just because you haven't done the research before you have an opinion on something, you should do the research before you develop an opinion. I can, no, I can, de- I can definitely dig that. I, I, I do think, and let me get Melanie's comment. Our sister Melanie in Chicago is listening to us, Dave. We know her well. We appreciate you, Melanie, for listening to us. Melanie says economics drives politicians. If you don't have the money, then your vote doesn't matter, period. All presidents are selected by who is giving them the most money. Black folks don't have money, therefore they can't come to the table and demand anything. That's what, what capitalism is all about. I definitely agree with that. I just think that it's different on a local level. Uh, I think that on a national level, when there are so many smoke and mirrors and people on a uh, local level aren't able to see what's going on and they're not able to like you said count and see the count and all that kind of stuff is a little bit different uh, but on a local level I mean I've seen it with my own eyes I've seen areas you know that participate you know get benefits versus areas that don't participate not get benefits so th- it, it's it's more about my my what I've seen in my perspective versus you know, what my thought process and my analysis of something that's more external. I want to take uh, I want to go in a different direction, Dave, because we're running out of time. Uh, we talked before uh, you and I about Baltimore and a little bit about the military, uh, the militarized uh, police force. Uh, so in the mm-hmm. in the in the five minutes that we have left, Dave, I want you to tell me your thoughts about Baltimore and the militarized police departments there. Well, Baltimore is exactly a part of exactions. This is the pains and the punishments that the government can willfully do against the people. Just one year ago, the Pentagon came out with a memo, and they basically said that they totally annihilated or or, or disbanded the posse comitatus. And what that means is that the separation between the private, the civilian, uh, government controlling the military. We, we're under a military coup, and we've really been under a military coup since Kennedy was assassinated. And the militarization of the police departments came from the Warren Commission that investigated Kennedy's uh, assassination. There was a, 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 um, a gentleman that was on the staff who later became an appellate court uh, justice here in California. Uh, Robert Moss. And then Robert Moss, during after the L.A. riots, what he did was he instituted uh, Program 1033, where the, gov- where the military was to give their surplus equipment to the police department. Okay? That was the start of the militarization of the police department. What you're seeing, what you saw in Ferguson, what you're seeing in Baltimore, is a, is a psychologic, they're psychologically preparing you to see the military intervene in everything. The Department of Defense one year ago said this, that a military commander can take over, a, can declare martial law, a military co- commander, even above the President of the United States. If the President is not, if the President cannot be reached, they can invoke martial law. This is the military taking over. One year ago, the Department of Defense put this out, and this is what they will do. They will subtly move, they've subtly moved their equipment and their personnel strategically throughout this country under the cover of the political and the uh, me, uh, mainstream media uh, propaganda of something else. But that's not what's really happening. You have now, and the thing about this is that once the military takes over and once they come in, they don't leave. And you no longer have your constitutional rights. You are subject to a military code of justice. You are subject of the state. Let me get some comments. Let me get some. Let me get some comments in here, uh, uh, Dave. Uh, Hakeem yep. Hakeem is dis- disagreeing with the. He says that there's just a lot of Illuminati conspiracy theory going on here with with, with some of the things that you're saying. And and Stephen is is disagreeing with you as well. Let him speak for himself. I'm sorry, but that is a lot. You're reading into it the way too wrong. To, what happened with that was a, the law of a proposal that was pushed out there for an issue if there was a, a event of total lawlessness of government or anything else that the military will hold pat until a center of uh, 
uh, government was in place. What happened did not happen with Kennedy, by the way, with the militarization of the police. That happened in Reagan in 1981, um, in June, in fact. And what happened in that situation was uh, when they had a big surplus, when it was the war on drugs and everything else, they took away a lot of the money from the HUD, the housing, everything else that was going on with social programs were pushed it in there and allowed for everything to go in to the local police. Now, what happened with that was a heavy handedness and did not allow allow too many military people that have into the local police force with no ties to the community, no understanding of the community, and just exactly one brand of justice that did not work. Now, what happened in Baltimore was a simple fact of just as the people of lack of communication. You saw the frailty online when they could not even come to an agreement of the same words online. They did their best, but they looked a hot mess on TV. I'd rather you just stay away from it. But from what your information was not correct. That came from Reagan and started in 1981. Only thing that I'll say to that is oftentimes when we hear people like Dave and people like myself and, and, and others say certain things, you know, we are immediately are ready to be on the defensive because it sounds strong, it sounds militant, and it sounds different than what we're used to hearing. The only thing that I will do is I will challenge Anybody who is listening and disagreeing, who wants to use phrases like conspiracy theory and all that kind of stuff, do the knowledge for yourself. You do the knowledge for yourself and you come away disagreeing, then so be it. But I'm going to need folks to not be listening and talking about, oh, that's wrong just because it sounds different than what they're going to hear when they turn on CNN. You know what I mean? And, and I hear you, Steven. And I, and I'm going to let you I'm going to let you rebut what I'm saying. And, and, and you, you can say what you want and Dave will get the last word. But. Too many times, that's, this is what we do. This is what our people do. And they hear us speaking in ways that sound strong, stronger than what we used to hearing. And all of a sudden, it must be wrong because, you know, it's not how we used to. White folks, ice ain't no more cold than ours. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. And so let's just be clear about that. And so if you disagree with the brother, come with the facts and, you know, call us up and we can talk about it. You here in the room. Tell us why you disagree. You know, you can't you can't really debate facts. Facts are facts. What you can dis what you can debate is opinions. Real quick, Stephen. Real okay, quick. I'm not a disagreeing with you on the uh, opinion of strong because I have on myself. But at least we come with facts and information. That was a 1033 program in 1981. I remember that for a fact of that information. I'm not saying conspiracy theory for anything out there. I'm offering the facts and the information that you're saying with that. Dave, you get the final. Oh, no, 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 I, Dave, you get no, the no, final word because we got to move. We got to move on to the next segment. So, Dave, final word. Yeah. Final word is this. Listen, this is the thing. Like Marcus said, fact check. This has nothing to do with Illuminati or anything else. You can ignore. You can ignore the consequences. I mean, sorry. You can ignore reality, but you can never ignore the consequences of it. Posse comitatus was was disemboweled by the Department of Defense. On May 14th, you can go and read what the Department of Defense put out, and they basically took the power from the, gov from the governors and the president to be able to invoke martial law for civil disruption or civil uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, disruption. This is what they put in one year ago for a very underlying reason. They know what's about to happen in this country. Also, when I talked about uh, the Warren Commission with Kennedy, Look up who Robert Moss was. This, he was a staff member. You could Wikipedia him. He's going to be under staff. He was also a part of the Christopher Commission for Los Angeles, and he was the one that said that the government, the military, should start giving surplus to the, uh, to the police departments because they were able to cover up so well Kennedy's killing, and this is why he was able to move into this particular point to affect the agenda that's coming. This is the truth. Nothing that I said, you can't fact check. The thing is this, you, you need to really change and look at your opinion of things that you're giving without researching the facts. Maybe you should just listen and then research it for yourself. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Our brother Dave Wren, David Wren, Dave in brother. LA. I want you one more time to tell the listeners who you are, 
where they can find you, whether it be on the air, social media, because I know that you got the folks riled up. You always had me riled up, and I always feel like you're giving me good information. I call you my big brother for a reason, and so I appreciate you <laughs> being here on the show with us tonight. Where can we find you if we're looking for you? You can definitely find me um, Monday through Friday, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time at uh, Blackonomics on the Empowerment Radio Network. And you can also uh, find me at 6 o'clock at Tando Radio Show, which is on Black Talk Radio Network. And, Marcus, I appreciate you, Stephen, and everyone else. Uh, much love, much respect, and just be careful. Whenever the media is pushing something, you need to start asking questions as to why, because a question is more important than the answer, because the questions are eternal. Answers are temporal. I can dig it. That's our brother, Dave Wren. David Wren, Dave in L.A. Dave, got a lot of love for you, brother. I appreciate your wisdom. Brother. Appreciate your hey, wisdom. Th- Marcus, I'm going to send you some, uh, um, some uh, uh, video so you can check it out. I definitely the do actual, that. Uh, the hearing with the uh, programmer. I'll definitely do it, and I'll share it with the crew here. Appreciate it, brother. We're going to talk to you soon. That's why okay, I'm saying peace to you. <laughs> Be cool, man. We're going to talk to you. You and I, peace. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, my brother, Big Rube, Roundtable. Big Rube, that's why, Mr. LP, Marcus J. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. Be back in a few minutes.